to our presentation. We're team number seven in Wear Modic Technologies. The team members are Luis Garcia, Ricardo Sanchez, Irwin Reyes, and myself, Melanie Ramirez. Our team wanted to help in some way the Army, and we were reading that 22% of the soldiers have a mental condition. They also have some other conflicts such as uh, dehydration, they go through chemical exposure, they also have physical and physiological uh, conflicts. And by creating a product, we wanted to detect that stress and help them immediately. In order to understand better the condition of a soldier, we did some research about it and we found out that they have two types of stress. One, it's the combat operational stress, which is caused by a neurological symptom. And if this stress is not treated correctly, it's gonna cause the PTSD or the post-traumatic stress. And the way we can detect the stress in a person, it's basically using the HRV or the heart rate variability. Our problem statement is based on a quote that the US Army said, and it's basically when a physical factor occurs and it's combined with a physiological factor, it's more likely to occur an injury and it could be catastrophic. The goal of our product is to reduce the amount of injuries that they currently have and we also wanted to reduce the amount of money that the Army is spending right now. And lastly, we also want to analyze the data for the well-being of the soldier. Hello, my name is Luis Garcia. To start off our project management slideshow, we first have to identify our team objectives. Our team objectives include every activity we had to do from the first of the semester to the end of the semester in order to create our prototype. For our process, we actually had to redesign the housing first from last semester because we had a lot of flaws. We also had to redo the figures and tables that we had because they were out of place and we had to put them in an order that it's fluid through the report. We also had to start on the coding and also at first we had to order the materials that way we get them in time and test our electrical components. Later on we'll have the analysis of our product and how it's going to finish and that to the end of the semester. So to start off our project management we first had to create our GAN chart. Our GAN chart mapped out everything, every activity we had to do specifically based from January 20 to April 30 with the due date. Well, we actually tried to stay better schedule by going through April 27th. Um, that was our goal and hopefully we'll finish it out around that time. As you can see this is a Gantt chart and we have several steps according to the activities which ones are predecessor of each. So for to map out our semester we had to make a critical path to see what's the best way we can go and reach our goal to create the prototype. So for the critical path method, this was the table we obtained. It includes the slack, the early finish, early start, the slack, um, the late start and the late finish. It also includes the predecessors. In here it's by numbers. Later on I'm going to show you a chart that has the activities by letters. The activities by letters that are in the, other, in the next slide is based off these activities from 110 which is A going down B, C, D, E. And we also have a most likely to finish time, the latest time we'll finish an activity, and the minimum time that we should re require to do the activity. We try to maintain a zero slack throughout the project, and we'll see how it ends up at, in the final presentation. In the critical path method, we also mapped out um, the critical path that we have to take. The reason why these are all in red is because they're all in critical and in order for us to make the other ones we have to follow each the step that we have to do and we had to do basically after we finish this activity we have to go to the next go to the next go to the next there are some that start at the same time because they don't have the same predecessor but they we have to start them by that time um we also mapped out down here on um, the different charts um the chart includes also early early start early finish late start late finish and the time that it should take. Um, we, all, we mapped it out and our conclusion is that we should take about 76 days. Um, that's rounded. If we round up uh, the decimal places, it would be 77 days. Um, but that's, that's what we had concluded. Also from the previous slide, 
we also had a conclusion of 77.67 days, which is 78 days. So it's 76, give or take two days. And that's all for the critical path method. Okay, so here are our conceptual designs starting from left to right. The first design we had was to have the monitor and heart rate sensor placed on the forearm of your arm and for the Arduino to be located around the short shoulder. The second design was uh, similar, but instead of having the sensor located on the, on the wrist, uh, lower forearm, it's gonna be located on the upper bicep. The third design we had was to make a vest that contained the Arduino and the battery as well as the heart rate sensor. We ended up going with the first design, which is the Arduino and battery on the forearm as well as the heart rate sensor. Okay, so for our final design, we, we went with the screen and a heart rate monitor on our forearm. This is the housing we came up with. It's gonna hold the LED touch screen as well as the Arduino and uh, battery power source. Okay, for, so for our first prototype, we had just designed a box just to hold the Arduino, with, and uh, which was pretty much a square. Then we took that design, turned it into this, a little bit more rounded to hold uh, a little bit more stuff, and uh, we had some external clips that was meant to hold a back plate on this guy. And we moved on to this one, which had the clip on uh, back, so clip fit, snap fit. And then from there, uh, that's when we decided that we were going to need to add a screen to this one. And it took a while for us to make the right prototype that was going to hold the screen. And we ended up closing up the snap fit on here. Okay, for our FMEA, which is the failure mode and effects analysis, uh, the purpose of the FMEA is to take action to eliminate or reduce failures, starting with the highest priority ones. And so what you do is you type in a function or a uh, step in your process or product and you uh, break it down to, to just figure out what are the potential failures and the effects that it has and how to improve on it. And so the higher RPN you have, which is the risk priority number, that's the a more high priority of a chance that you have uh, for failure. And so for our prototype so far, our uh, scores are a little high, but it's because most of our components are still exposed. So for the upcoming chapters, um, we are going to include the computer aid design where we will have our design layouts for our prototype. We're also going to include the fundamentals of engineering which will con contain the facility location and facility layout. Our economic analysis, we're also going to have um, the internal rate of return. We're going to have the future worth and present worth of our product and we're going to try to see how we can profit. Um, the quality control we have done the FMEA, but we're going to try to see if we can actually test out our product and see how it um, differs from another product. For right now, we have the materials, what materials we're going to use, um, and the materials of the plastic that we're going to use specifically. Um, we also have the manufacturing process where we're going to include how to create our prototype and, or our product. And for the manufacturing process, we're also going to include a time measurement to see how long it will take to create a product and get it to our demand. For the operations research, we're going to see how we can maximize our profit or if not minimize our cost depending on the, what machines we use and the process. And for our planning and control, we're going to see our demand based on our supply depending on the military. So the material that we're proposing to use for a product, it's TPU. And by doing research, we found out some of the advantages and what well, we found out that it has high elasticity. It's also good resistance to changes in the weather and it's also good resistance to many solvents or like oil or grease. And it also has a high uh, flexibility. And for the process, uh, we're still doing research about it, but we are planning to use injection molding. Okay, so for electrical components, we have Arduino Uno, we have a 2.8 inch Lego touchscreen. Um, we, we're gonna have a case with two 18650 batteries and of course the pole sensor. All this runs with five volts and we did this so it can make it easier for us because we're not electrical students so this is way better. Also making it everything five volts uh, it makes it 
that we can connect everything directly with no problem. On your picture to your right, you can see a diagram that connects the pulse sensor to the Arduino. Um, this changes because two of the cables will be connected to the batteries. Only one will be connected to the Arduino that will get the signal from the pulse sensor and the coding will do a analysis of this and it will tell you if you have high stress or low stress and you will be able to see this in a minute on my video the coding okay for the coding we're using uh, ide software that you can download on your computer and this makes it easier because we just connected a usb cable from the Arduino to the actual computer and just upload the code and start working with it right away. Okay, so this is our senior design project. As you can see, it's gonna be attached to your arm. It's gonna have a strap so you can put it where you feel comfortable. Here is the 2.8 inch screen. It's gonna be powered with five volts as well as the Arduino that is inside the case. The case has um, this little square that is gonna be the attached so you can put the batteries there and you can change them when the battery runs out. Because if it's a touch screen, you can see that it's a, it says psychological stress status and it has a next button. So you click on it, it moves to the system and here you're gonna have the person's name and over here it's gonna have the status where it says SL is gonna appear a red light or a green light. The red light means that uh, you're stressed and you should calm down. The green light is, uh, it just means that you're good. Here is the beats per minute or BPM. The normal beating should be around 60 to 100. So right now it shows big numbers because I think the sensor has, the cables are a little bit disconnected or something like that, but we're gonna fix that. Right now it's powered with Arduino Mega because the batteries just arrived but the, for future uses it's gonna be powered with the uh, 18 1650 batteries that I talked about on the on the PowerPoint right now it works with this pole sensor the pole sensor is gonna be connected with one cable to one of the pins of the Arduino and two of the cables is gonna they're gonna go to the batteries and that's how it's gonna be powered up um, Right now it's bits per minute, but it should be using HRB to check your stress. Right now um, we just put that to show you like how, it, how it's gonna be on the screen, but it's actually, the code should actually be working with the HRB or heart rate variability.